Hey, welcome to Offshore Audio. I'm Andrew, I'm a live sound engineer, and this is the channel where I'm bringing you tips and tricks and advice to help you mix better live events. So something I've been asked about quite a few times is just, can I do a video covering how to rig up a whole system? Specifically, people have been asking me this about rigging up a system with an X32 or an M32. So that's what I'm gonna do today. So whether you're confused about how to rig up your own system or you're just curious about how I would go about rigging up a system using this kind of equipment, this video is for you. So I'm gonna give you an overview of everything that you need to get the system set up. I'm gonna show you how to connect it all together so you're ready to go and how to set up your mixer and tune your PA a little bit so that you're ready for any events that are about to happen in your space, whether that's spoken word, music, conferences, whatever. Before we get started, a really important part of tuning your system is of course knowledge of EQ. So I have a gift for you and that is my three-step guide to perfect EQ. In this PDF guide, I'm just taking you through a really simple three-step formula that I use every time for getting great EQ results. And you can get that by heading to offshoreaudio.no forward slash EQ and you can just download the PDF guide from there. So offshoreaudio.no forward slash EQ or visit the link which is down in the description below this video. But for now, without further ado, let's dive in. Let's start a little bit with the scope of this video, what we're going to cover, right? And that is setting up the system that is not ringing up microphones and connecting to the boxes or doing any kind of alternative routing measures. I've done a video covering the mixer, routing in depth on this before, and I will link to it down below. If you're rigging up a new system, I highly recommend getting a complete system that complements itself and all the parts complement each other instead of like piecing together. Oh, I have an amplifier here and a speaker there because you're unlikely to get a really good sound from doing something like that. Quite often manufacturers have amplifiers that they build specifically for their products with presets and processors in mind that get the best out of those products. And if you start trying to use one brand of amplifier with another brand of speakers and stuff, you can run into problems. That being said, let's talk about the system. I'm gonna show you how to rig up a stereo system here with two subs sent in mono. And I'll show you how to rig up two monitor speakers. It's gonna be a passive system, so it's gonna be connected to external amplifiers. We'll talk about those in a minute. You're also going to need the cables to connect all these up. I'm going to show this on an M32. This obviously applies exactly to an X32, whatever version of that you want. The techniques also apply to any mixer, any system. I encourage you, if you have something that is not an X32 or an M32, to just download the manual and try and find out how to do each step of this process using your mixer. So what do you need? M32 mixer, DL32 stage box, or any kind of AES50 stage box, two monitor wedges, two passive tops, two passive subs, three stereo amplifiers. Appropriate power cables, shielded Cat5E cable or higher. Ideally, it would have Ethercon connectors on the end, XLR cable, for connecting the stage box to the amplifiers. Speak on cable for connecting our amplifiers to our speakers. RCA to mini jack cable for testing our system. So obviously this is an M32R, it's currently mounted in a rack, but you'll get the idea. If it's an X32, if it's a full format M32, it doesn't matter, principles remain the same. Let's look at the back then. I've touched on this before, but Here's our input section, here's our output section, and our auxiliary inputs and outputs. Some monitor speakers and talk back that we won't cover in this video. I'll leave a link to a video on this stuff if you wanna learn more about that. But what we're interested in right now is this here, our AES system. We're gonna use that to connect to our stage rack. So you wanna place your speakers in front of the stage, or at least in line with it. You don't want your speakers to be behind the players or behind the microphones because that's going to result in feedback because your speaker is playing into the microphone then. So in front of the stage, but also in front of the audience. And you want to take your monitor speakers as well, right? Obviously, you're going to place them where they need to go for band members, but you want to try and avoid pointing it towards the audience because then you've got a relationship between your monitor speaker and your main speakers. 
Now, obviously, I can't show you me rigging up my speakers in this venue because my speakers are rigged on a truss above the stage already. But yours would presumably be on a stand or at some other point where you would decide where you're going to place them. So it's just to position them playing out into the audience area. And think as well about the coverage of your speaker. Look up the instructions. I've covered this in a previous video, but find out the angle of coverage of that speaker and think about that. If your speaker, usually speakers play sort of uh, narrower this way, so there's less of a sort of uh, coverage in the vertical plane when it's positioned like this, but wider that way. So in this instance, if this speaker was sitting here, it's playing, you know, maybe like 90 degrees, it's covering most of the audience area. But if you were to orient your speaker this way, you would find that you had a lot of coverage in the vertical plane, but not so much in the horizontal, and you might find people missing out on some sound at the front in here. So I'm going to dive in here with a note on speaker placement, right? I've just demoed this here, placing the speakers on the stage to give you an idea of the speakers that I'm using and the things that you need to have. But you want to have those speakers above head height, really. Ideally, you want to be playing slightly down into the audience because if your speaker is at the same level as the heads of the front row, you're going to get a lot of that sound absorbed by the first people in the front row. And the further you get back, the less sound is gonna reach people, especially high frequencies. So try going above and then like playing down and you should in theory get a far more even coverage. So get a little bit of height in your system. Before we get everything connected up, we want to sort of build our rack, ideally beside the stage in this example. And that's where we're going to stack all of our amplifiers in our stage box so that all the connectivity is located in the same place. And once that's all stacked together, we're ready to go. So then you've got the back side of your stage box, take your power cable, connect that up, and then your AES cable goes into AES A. And that's it for the back of it. You can turn it on. We're going to connect seven and eight into our amplifier for our main speakers. This is our main left and right output. And we're also gonna connect channel one for our monitor and channel two for our monitor. And these are going to go into our monitor amplifier. So here we want to connect our power supply up, connect our cat cable into AES-A, and then we can turn this guy on. Okay, let's talk amplifiers really quick then. So this is a really simple two-channel amplifier, right? Channel A, channel B, two channels of amplification. Controls for the volume controls of those channels are on the front. Let's turn it around. On the back side here, we have two inputs, two links, and two outputs. Really simple. Channel A is one channel of amplification, and it has its own output. Channel B is a separate channel of amplification with its own output. So we are going to take Output seven from our stage box, that was our main left, and we're gonna connect it to channel A. And we're gonna take output eight from our stage box, that was our main right, and we're gonna connect that to channel B. We're then gonna get speak on cables, and we're gonna connect with a speak on cable, the output of channel A to the left side of our PA. So it's covering the left hand side of the audience. We're then going to take channel B, and we're gonna connect that to the main speaker covering the right area of our audience. So channel one is left, channel two is right. And then we turn this guy around and we can just turn the volume up to full. So we're gonna get a little sticker here and it's gonna say sub. What we're gonna do this time is we're gonna take output six on our stage box, which we will assign to our sub, and we're gonna connect that into input for channel A. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna take the link from channel A and then we're gonna hop that over to the input for channel B. Take our speak on and we're gonna connect channel A to one of our subs and we're gonna connect channel B to the other sub. And then we can turn the volume up on those amplifiers as well. And the process would be exactly the same for the monitors as for the main front of house speakers. We take output one of our stage box into channel A and then output A of this amplifier to our first monitor and the same channel two, output two from our stage box into channel B input and then the speak on from channel B into our second monitor speaker. 
Now that we have positioned our speakers, we know that we have good coverage of the venue. We have made our rack of our equipment beside the stage in an easy to access place. We're ready to carry it on. So let's wrap this up real quick and get this mixer set up. This is what your mixer will look like when you first turn it on, completely reset. So I want you to go to the routing screen using this D-pad here and go over until it says patch and then out. If you scroll down left and right, you'll see that seven and eight are already set to main left and right. A whole video on the routing of this mixer that you can check out. I'll leave it in link down below if this confuses you. But six, which we're going to use for our sub, is not yet set. Currently, the output is on mix bus six. But what we want to do is we want to send out our mono bus because we're going to use that for our sub. So we just scroll down until here, main M slash C, that's mono center, post fader here, and then we click assign. Output six is going to send out whatever we send to the main mono center, right? All that means is that now we have full control over what goes to the sub. So there's a couple of things we need to do, right? We need to set up a bit of a crossover there because on our main PA, we don't want to have, say, anything below 100 hertz coming out of there. So we'll select our main, left, right, go to the EQ, get the lowest band, change the mode to be a low cut filter, turn it on, move the frequency to 100. And then we're going to, on the right hand side here, we're going to go to matrix main C. And this here is our sub. So we are going to select that and we are going to do the same thing. Go to the EQ, but we'll pick the high band and select a high cut, turn it on and we'll turn that down to 100 Hertz. And this fader here now controls our sub. So we can put it at zero for now. We might need to turn it down later. Now, whenever you're mixing something, as standard, it's not gonna need to go to the sub, right? Vocals don't need the sub, guitars don't need the sub, voice doesn't need the sub, that sort of thing. If you're playing a film or some sort of music, if it's a bass guitar or if it's a bass drum, bass synth, something like that, it might need to go to the sub. In that case, all you do is you select the channel and you click this button here, mono center. And then this here, allows you to decide how much of that instrument you are sending to the sub. So you can fine tune each individual thing to go to the sub. The last thing we need to do is make sure that our mix buses are coming out of output one and two, which they should be as standard. Output one goes mix bus one, post fader, great. Output two, mix bus two, post fader, great. That's fine. In this case, post fader means that the output from the mixer comes after the bus itself. It's not talking about the send from the channel. When you open it up, you want to go over to the input section and you want to make sure that your stage box is showing on AESA. But if you had that green light earlier, it will be connected. But if you don't see a stage box here, then double check that you are connected to your stage box. It's time to test the PA. So we'll take a mini jack and we're gonna connect it to our laptop. The other side of that mini jack is connected to auxiliary in five and six. So over here, we go to auxiliary in USB, you see here, five and six. Currently they're not stereo linked, that's fine. I'm gonna make sure the volume's turned up on my Mac. Good healthy signals coming in here. The main master fader is turned up to zero. I want you to turn up the left side. I want you to walk the room and verify that you hear the sub and top playing together. I want you to turn up the right side. And I want you to walk the room Verify that those two speakers are on the correct side or playing correctly. You can also mute your main, turn these guys up, make sure that they're sent to the sub and verify that all of that works. You can now link these channels together and you can push them up and you can go into the effects and you'll find on effects number eight, there's a graphic EQ, which you can use to then tune the room. I won't get into tuning the room at this point. What you can also do then is go to your monitor sense, bus one, make sure that your bus is up and unmuted, press fader flip, and then push this up to send it to monitor one and verify that sound is coming out of monitor one and do the same for monitor two. And just like that, your mixer is ready to go. If you just want everything to come from the stage box, go into this first routing screen and just change the first block to AESA one to eight, Second block to AES 8, 9 to 16, 70 to 24, and so on. And then you'll have a fully functional stage box. But go watch the routing video as a sort of companion to setting up this whole process. So that's everything set up then. If you want to take it even further, I've got loads of videos on this stuff. I'll link to some of them down below. In summary then, what are we doing, right? We're getting all our stuff. We're positioning our speakers, building a rack beside the stage, and then we're connecting the correct outputs of the stage box 
to the inputs of our amplifiers. We have a separate amplifier channel for every speaker. We're then going back to the mixer. We're ensuring that the outputs on the stage box are sending what we want out of those outputs so that they are then connected to the correct amplifiers. The amplifiers are connected to the speakers, of course. And then we're playing music and we're gonna test the system. We're gonna test each individual component to make sure it all works and functions as intended. And then we're going to listen objectively to it and make any tweaks that we think we might need to make to have it ready to go. As I said at the start of this video, you'll need to EQ your system. And if you need some help with EQ, then please head to offshoreaudio.no forward slash EQ for my free three-step guide to perfect EQ. And that's gonna give you underlying principles of EQ that you should be able to apply, not just to instruments and individual channels on your mixer, but also system tuning as a whole. So please offshoreaudio.no forward slash EQ or the link there in the description to get that free EQ guide. And let me know if this one was helpful. Did I miss something? Is there something about your system that you would still like me to cover that I didn't get in that video? Please let me know. Like the video if that was exactly what you needed. Subscribe to the channel if you would like to see more videos about system setup and live mixing tips. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.